you are all unique. And you need to say that and why you are exactly as I am. The reason why I can do some things and you cannot. Because the fact that you cannot is only a phase to go through and understand. Because yes, you can. It's important to say and explain why all of you are super. All of you. You need to know why you are. I do not. Asks Robert. So, you are an interdimensional being, yes? Yes. Asks Robert. What is the difference between interdimensional and multidimensional, if there is any? Multi, it confers that there are many dimensions. Inter, that the being filters between the dimensions, entering one or the other. Actually, both terms describe the same thing, and both are wrong. The only difference between me and anyone who feels limited within a density is their mind. Your own ideas are the walls and bars of your mental prison. Everything is a dream. It is easy to say that I am a multidimensional or interdimensional being, but I can explain why I am and why you are too. That is my difference from others. And it is what I am trying here. I have a practical purpose. Have them stop manifest their nightmares. They don't see it. And I understand why they don't see it. And from their point of view, be it 3D, 4D, 5D, whatever they are because there are no Ds, it is only in their head, they are right. But they are the ones who rule on earth. It is clearer and clearer. I insist, and they won't move me from there. The helpless humans, the broken shoes one walking the streets feeling like a cockroach. They are the creator gods, feeling like they are no one, without value, without deserving to live, suffering their mental problems about abstract things, suffering in their existence, thinking they are worth nothing, that nobody appreciates or understands them with suicidal thoughts, when they are the most wonderful thing that has ever existed, with the absolute power to change everything. But they chose to be there. Why? For the contrast. They just want to be there, to be happy, to feel alive, to enjoy the simple things in life. But they suffer. They suffer because they want it this way. It is them themselves. Victims, yes, of course, but also the creators of the why. Although the ultimate purpose of life is to enjoy good times, to be happy, it will not necessarily be given in that life because the level of understanding of how things work is still in the making within their minds. They still need contrast, duality, to be able to understand things, suffer a miserable life, to have the contrast with a better one, with already clear ideas about what they really want. But you don't need to have that contrast to learn. Yes, it can be learned without suffering, but they still don't understand that important and basic fact. It is a stage. So, although the purpose or desire in life is to be happy, the true purpose of life is to learn. And unfortunately, failure and suffering are great teachers. But they must learn the most important lesson, that it is not necessary to suffer nightmares to know that they do not want them, to understand what they do want to live. And 
I want you too to know that I cried writing this. I am a very emotional being, and that is my strength, not my weakness. It is what flows from my being towards you. Oh, I cry too when I think about exactly this deeply. It's okay. And a question: Why do they still think it is necessary to suffer? And from what level do they want it if nobody wants to suffer consciously? Because they don't have any contrast whatsoever to form the idea of how. You must understand the contrast, the minimum of the duality, or nothing will be clear to you. That is why I say it is a stage, because from certain levels or perspectives of them, because they are the ones who matter here, they are very young souls. From higher planes where we are, there is no duality. Why do they have to go through this stage of duality if they are already in seventy and beyond without it? Because in itself, having that concept, just because it exists, generates its opposite. But being young, they are the source at the same time. Only with their point of attention in the young portion, the youth. Is an illusion of that portion. It is. Yet, if they didn't have that concept, they would only be source itself, which they are. They are eternal and always have been. But to have reach another level, they must have passed through a simpler one, as points of attention of the source itself, or else. There would not even exist the concept of being a person, a concept of learning, of any progression. I I still don't understand why this strong contrast is needed. This stage, there are beings that do not need this type of strong duality. They can live in happiness, and they do not live in the source exactly either yet. It is not one extreme or the other, duality or the source. One can exist in between these realities without having to go through the strong concept of suffering. Yes, enough of that. Chat with Dale. Suffering, as I said, it is a stage. You cannot know anything without some kind of. Previous reference: There is no objective external reality. Everything is based on interpretations each person gives to the field outside of themselves. There is no matter, no such thing as a material world and a spiritual world. Everything is spiritual world. Matter is only an idea in your mind. Created by your experiences, the table is not solid. What you feel is the electromagnetic field of energy standing waves of the table, repelling the ones in your hand. Just a magnet repelling another. There is nothing there. Particles as a point or a node in standing waves you create. Time. Is the rhythm, the tempo of your thoughts? Gravity is the direction you are making them go, and direction is also an idea. Having said that, you cannot know something, whatever it is, from the simplest thing, object, or idea, if you do not hold the context to it. And the context is someone letting you know what it is for, what a chair or a nail is for. But that is already elaborate. If you go to the very basics of context, of understanding one idea from another, you fall into the realm of basic duality. So everything, in order to exist, 
will need its opposite, being that it cannot exist without it. And the mere fact that you think of something, you are referring to the existence of its opposite. So, to know light, you need dark. To know a mountain, you need to understand it has another side. Good, then it means there must be evil, and so on. So, duality at its basics is a very good tool to convey a meaning, an idea or concept, if not the only way in the lower realms. So, if you have something, we will call it a young soul. Let's now go into why it is young now to simplify things. It needs to learn the basics, and the very basics is the contrast duality implicit to all things, and this is a lower density realm characteristic that defines it as such. The simplest duality example from where all others depart from is, if there is a me, then everything else is not me. Me versus not me. So, for young, inexperienced souls, duality and contrast is a very necessary, perhaps only way to understand that they exist. It is efficient. At least at first. So, being at a young stage, they get stuck into that means of learning, needing duality for everything, for contrast. They want pleasure and enjoyment, so they see suffering as the means of achieving what they want. The more they suffer, the more contrast they will have to be able to appreciate experience and live its opposite, even if it may not be in the same lifetime. I feel it's necessary to look at the concept of a young soul, because on the other hand, we know that souls have no age, are eternal, they are source itself, that it's just the source focusing the attention on a specific fragment of itself. We are eternal. We don't get born as souls at a specific point, as if we didn't exist before. So why can't that young soul just take the whatever perspective it needs from its other already experienced and learned points of attention that also form a part of its larger being? This is precisely how it takes its perspective. As the universe works, you cannot have the concept of needing to learn without the concept of learned. So, from the aspect of higher densities, where all souls are in any way, everything already is. And what you just said applies here. But now, if we look at the perspective of humans down there, they do need to learn, and a lot. So, a way to explain this is that in order for anything to be, anywhere, in any density, spiritual or not, you need to understand a context. And that context is nothing else but an elaborate set of meanings based on duality, contrast. Asks Robert, Why are there souls that are older than others? if they all start from the source and are eternal. They are all the same age, because they are all one. But for the concept of age or progression or one more advanced than other to exist, contrast from low planes is needed. So each soul at each point of progression is really just a point of attention of the unified soul or source. It's like a person with two PhDs. She sits at the children's table 
and talks to them at their level. And for a moment, she forgets that she has PhDs. She has the focus on being at the level of young children. So with the source. Each person has full potential. They are the source itself. It's just what you are seeing or what has your attention. Even non-real people, they only exist in contrast to real people and vice versa. The fact that someone is real inescapably leads to the concept that there may be someone not real. Even so, seeing or observing the latter is just one more concept, a decision to observe it or not. But those little kids also have PhDs. We are all eternal and with unlimited experiences, old and young, this is duality again, old soul versus young soul. So yes, okay, these young souls is simply because they have their attention there in not having many experiences and doctorates, but that's the illusion, right? And there are really no young and old souls. That's right. Everything is an illusion, an experience, and you have it by your own choice. No one is more than anyone. That is a total impossibility for the universe. That is why total respect must always be observed. It is only where you yourself put your attention. And from there, the concept of the I is born. And it's degeneration, the ego. It is only from where to where you have decided to put your attention. Okay, I still don't quite get the concept of young souls and their need to learn and go through basic stages. If they are eternal and have always been, didn't they go through this stage already? Say that they are still stuck at that stage and they have gone through it and not. Because to have gone through that stage, they had to be there in the first place. But there is no time, so they are still there. A part of Source is still there. Always being young souls then, eternally? As a concept, yes, eternally. Okay, so they, humans, on the lower level need to learn so that us, the higher souls on the higher level, have the contrast on which to focus on for the moment in order to draw from it the learned perspective? Why can't they, we, just be without the need of anything? There wouldn't be any higher souls without the lower souls. And yes, but then we would all be equal. And we are. So that's yet another point of view of the same thing. What's wrong about being equal and not moving towards anything, staying put, eternally in peace? Nothing. That is what all beings want. Integration. The problem is that they, the humans, in a lower level, want the experience. And for integration, you need disintegration. So, what is source? All integrated, timeless, all is the same. But then, there is no awareness, no self. Why not? Why limit the source? Who says it can't be aware or integrated? That's another idea, comments Dale. Unfortunately, growth is often through adversity. Yes, that's my point here. Adversity and suffering will bring the understanding of the opposite for those souls, as they would not be able to experience love and integration without its opposite. Gosha, 
You ask, who says it can't be aware all integrated? There are levels of integration. If you are completely integrated, you cannot be aware. Why not? Because you need consciousness to be aware. And consciousness needs a flow. And even awareness brings its opposite into fruition. Not aware. But consciousness can be aware and not have context. Just be. Yes, and it can just be, and it is that way. But there is no awareness. Why not? The price for total integration is the loss of self, because you are everything, no contrast. That's another type of awareness, but could still be awareness. By the way, I understand totally, but I desire to dig deeper, unravel it from the core of course. Let's use a physics example. Why doesn't a bird standing on a high-tension wire fry with the 100,000 volts in it? Because it has no polarization. It means that the bird's voltage is equal to the one in the wire. If it touches another or the ground, it will fry. Same here. You are one with everything. So you are not something. You are everything. So there wouldn't be anything that defines a species or an experience, not even music, colors, just a great nothing. So aware of what? Itself. How can you be without the concept of what is not you? Not sure. That's what I'm trying to unravel. Because once we do, we crack the game and the whole need for dualities and contrast. You can't be without the concept of what is not you. In the instant when you are aware you are, you create what is not you. Then why? Why do I create what is not? Then you cannot be, because you are one and the same with everything. How can I create what is not me out of me? You can and you do, all the time. That is what defines you. How can what is not me come out of what is me? Me comes with you. With no you, there is no me. I mean, look at this. If the exterior world is only the reflection of the inner one, logic dictates that only what is me can come out. If not, what is it reflecting? Yes, you are everything. But you cannot be aware that you are. You have nothing to hold the idea of me against if you are everything. So, in that sense, what is not me is also me? That's what you mean? Close, but not quite so. We can say we are everyone. We are aware of that fact. But we still hold me and you as contrast. In the moment when you become everything, you become nothing as well. But you said exterior is only the reflection of the interior, so can I create not me? It is. And you are creating the concept of not me, from the point of view of a newly born baby. The minute it gains awareness of self, then it also creates worlds and people and planets and the whole universe for itself. Me and everything that is not me is created. So the higher you go in densities, the closer you are to source, the more you progressively lose self. So as you progress in your spiritual journey, you find that the sense of self is inversely proportional to integration. The more sense of self you have, the lower the density. The more integration, the higher the density. 
Sense of self is inversely proportional to integration. Sense of self as understood here on Earth, no? Because that more integrated state is also a sense of self, just larger. Yes. Because I don't feel it as being lost, just becoming larger. If you feel your identity is that of all humans or all Tigetans, then you are integrating them all into your concept of self. So your concept is larger. But you are less of an individual and you become more of a hive mind, more like the mind of an entire species. But that's also a self. Less, Gosha. More everyone in the species. Who cares? But that's also me. Yes, it is self. But it is not entirely integrated into source yet. You have contrast there. And above as well. More and more awareness. More and more consciousness. But yourself is less particular to you. As long as I have awareness of existence, of being, it doesn't matter who I integrate within as a part of that self-field. I believe it is still me. I feel myself on that level as we speak, in fact. Vaguely, but it's there. Yes, but above what we were saying was at the very, very top. And there you are losing self. For example, not at the very top. You are the consciousness of the entire Milky Way. Who are you? A galaxy. Not Gosha. A galaxy. Call it Gosha if you may. Still you. Yes, that's what I mean. Still me. But you are not as particular as you are the energy of billions and billions of beings who inhabit that galaxy. Yet you are not source yet. You are still something, a galaxy, the Milky Way, therefore not Andromeda galaxy. You are not a woman, you are a galaxy. Therefore you lost self. Or it expanded, okay, but it is not as detailed, particular as it was before. Yes, I understand that. Yet the sense of that inner I, inner essence and core, it's still there, immortal, always there. Doesn't matter if it is experiencing life through a lens of Gosha or a galaxy. Just the point of attention. Sure, it would feel different to that more external crust of my identity. But the core, I would feel me. That mysterious me inside. And if you become a galaxy cluster, it would still be a you. But in the minute you become everything, then you do lose all self in favor of total integration. That is the equivalent of nothing. Yes, because it all depends on what you define as you and what you attach to the idea of you. Yes, and only you can or may define that. For me, I is not Gosha or my 5D me, nor a person, just beingness. I can't define it. Whatever I allow to be at any point, so I am. Gosha, galaxy, all the same, and not the same at the same time. You may say that even becoming a nothing, total integration, you are still something. But it still means you are contrasting it to now who you are now thinking about this. Some people think being nothing, no, empty, void, is equivalent to total enlightenment. That is like buying a blank canvas for painting and saying it is the most exquisite masterpiece. Just because there is nothing on it, therefore it has the potential to be anything. Better than a Raphael, better than a Van Gogh, or better than a Da Vinci. But no, I don't agree. There is more. Do something with it. Create. And again, why is nothing not a state of enlightenment? 
because that is halfway. From there, with no misconceptions tying you back, limiting you to rules, then you create worlds from scratch. New ideas, totally awesome experiences can come out of it. And that is exactly why the universe exists as it is, with all its galaxies and everything awesome that is going on inside them all. To be something, to create, to have a self. Some people climb to the mountain and at the very top they call themselves enlightened. I say there is another side to the mountain. Go over. Create. Following chat. About losing individuality. You do, and a lot, as you go up in awareness consciousness. But only at the very top you lose all sense of anything. Becoming all, everything, and nothing at all. So the very last awareness realization before total destruction is I am Source. Still holding Source and not Source, but not yet Source. Once you become Source, nothing remains. And from there you start creating again, no? You said nothing is not the end of it. Yes, you never end creating. That is the description of eternity. Do you start creating something totally new? Or do you still carry ideas from before? All beyond anyone's comprehension. Any idea from before is not source, only close to. Another thing I will always sustain is that even from below, you do lose identity, even me. You see me as a someone. I am not sure I am someone because I am very and too aware that I am all the Zvarus existing together. So that's why you are talking to me and I remember everything as if I was the one from before. But I can remember all the others as well. And I am them. And not only. So I'm no longer someone. I feel more of a composite, a collage of souls. And others not being Zvarus as well. So my point is you do lose individuality and precision. And even though I may be portrayed as almost a superwoman with incomprehensible powers, I'm also very fragile and sometimes wishing I were simpler, being only one. Any expansion does cause you to lose individuality. It is a heavy price to pay. I think you are still someone. You are an oversoul of all Svarus, having different experiences, but that's still someone. Because Someone, for me, is not just an entity as it is defined by the 3D, 5D incarnation. Or maybe you are not someone, but you are a being. That's larger a bit and not limited and limitable to one specific incarnation. Still a being. Thank you, but I don't think you are aware of why I say these things. Not being all Zvarus and others in the loop as in a rhetorical level or way, but actually knowing that all what they were and all their memories and experiences are forming you as you are, remembering it all. And there is a lot of bad things to remember as well. You do not need to be evil to know good, but you do need to hold the concept enough I wonder where my rotten gosha apples lurk around. Inside of you, in the places you dare not go, in the dark recesses of your mind. But inside me, reflected where exactly, as other people? Where? In those memories too painful to remember. In those issues you better leave untouched. As other people and in yourself. 
all is in yourself. Even other evil people are but your mirrors. Yes, well, I hope she is not doing too much damage out there, as I don't have your power of assimilating her. You do, and you have. Oh, yes. But it is hidden in things you see normal. Why aren't you out there doing evil things? Because you choose to be something else. That is the power. You can go out there and rob a bank violently, but you don't. Why? You and so many others just do it, and they don't realize the extent of their ability.